after, which means something, someone who is trustworthy. And the only trustworthy that we have is Jesus Christ, because he has died for us in the cross of Calvary. So that's why he called, by, he, he called himself that he's the faithful and true witness. But we have the third name, the third title that Jesus is using for him in this case. And, and, and this title is Ruler of God's Creation, which the word in Greek is Arche, and it has several meanings. But specifically, what he wants or he's trying to say according to the same context in the book of Revelation, if we go to Revelation chapter 1, verse 5, he's trying to emphasize that he was the creator, that he was the one who, begin, who began with life here on earth. For example, if we, if we go to the book of John, to the book of John, the same, the, 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 the same author who wrote the Gospel of John was the same one who wrote the book of Revelation. And in John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, what the Bible says, through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. So, He's having a special emphasis. He's trying to let Laodiceans know that he is the creator. That they were not supposed to have anything that they were having if it was because God was allow, uh, uh, allowing, uh, allowing them to have those things. But they were being prideful. They were thinking that all those things that they were having was because they deserve it. And that's why God is having a strong and perhaps harsh message for them. But in the exhortation, in, in, in the exhortation we, we already saw, I know your deeds. God knows what they are doing. I know your deeds. That you are neither cold nor hot. And he, 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 he's presenting to these people this message because these people were knowing very well their situation about the water. But now, let's think a little bit about what the Bible says about waters. Jesus by himself says, I am the water of life. So if Jesus described himself as the water of life, and this place now is not having water, but those cities were helping Laodicea in order to have that kind of water system, in order to receive water, what do you think that was the main, the main need that Laodicea was having? I think, and we are gonna, we are gonna have a better conclusion, a better clues later on, that this church, the meaning of this church is not a physical one. It's a spiritual one. Because they were having water. They were having gold. They were having clothes. They, they were having a, a great enterprise, which, were, uh, which was selling a lot of clothes. They were selling clothes. They were having the best system bank, by the way. You have a lot of city, and if we go through history, we are going to find out that Laodicea was the only city that rejected the, he the help of the Roman Empire. That was the only city that rejected that help. And they say, no, we don't need anything. We don't need every anything from the empire. By the way, the empire needs to ask us about what we have. They were being prideful. They thought that everything that they were having was well deserved for them. Unfortunately, the Bible says, I wish that you were either cold or hot. Revelation 3.16 says, So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, 
I am about to spit you out of my mouth. I would like to point that out specifically. The Bible says, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. But if you go through the Bible in the Old Testament as well as in the New Testament, we are going to find that in those cases when the Bible is presenting that Jesus or, or God in the Old Testament is opening his mouth is because there is a judgment taking place. So when the Bible is mentioning, I am about to spit you out of my mouth, is that there is a judgment which is going upon those who are rejecting God's message. Those who are rejecting the message that actually God is giving to Laodicea. So we are going to understand, we need to understand that, for example, I am about to spit you out of my mouth. The book of Revelation says in Revelation chapter 19 that when, when God comes, when Jesus comes, he's opening his mouth and, and, and from his mouth is coming out a sword, a double, a double sword. And that double sword is killing those who have rejected him. So when he's spitting or when he's opening his mouth is because he's coming in order to pronounce what? A judgment. Revelation chapter 3 verse 17 says, You say, I am rich, and I have acquired wealth, and do not need a thing. But you don't realize that you are wretch, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. This is something amazing because now the Laodiceans were saying to the Roman Empire, We are rich. We don't need anything. But now the message of the ruler of God's creation, the faithful one, the true witness, the amen, is telling to Laodiceans, you don't have anything. You are poor. But actually, when we go through history, they were not poor. They were not they were not naked because they were having the best enterprise at that time of clothes. They were selling the best clothes at that time. And by the way, those people who were buying clothes to Laodicea, to Laodicea, those people were rich. Not everyone was able to buy uh, clothes to Laodicea. To Laodicea. But now they are, they are, uh, Jesus is calling them that they are naked. They are blind. How is possible? That they are blind if we have already seen that they were having collidium. And actually collidium uh, w was made out of a, a plant. That, uh, and that plant was uh, taken in a process. And then that plant, they were, extra they were having all the, the extract. And they were making like a powder. In order to put that powder on your eyes, in your eyes, and then you will have a better, better sight when you were having problems with your sight. So now God is calling them that they are blind, even though they are having that product that everyone was looking for at that time, but they were the only city that, 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 that was having that powder by that time. So Jesus is saying something, but the history is telling us, is, is telling us Another completely different thing. What is happening here? Well, the New Testament use different terms for when, 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 when Jesus or the author of the New Testament used the word poor. But, the, but the, the word which is used here in the New Testament is the word focus, which means extreme poverty. So God is calling them, you are not a simply poor. You are, at a, you, you are living in extreme poverty. So, I am having a clue that Jesus is not talking to them, to them about this, the, the material things that they were having. Because if Jesus would have been talking about the physical things that they were having, the material things, I think that this message was not compatible to them. Because when we look at the Bible, 
we are going to see that God is calling them with an extreme poverty. But they didn't have extreme poverty. They were rich. But also, this church is, is not condemned by heresies or apostasies. Also, this church do, does not have persecution. So when we go to Ephesus, when we go to Smyrna, when we go to Theophira, we are going to find that they are having apostasies as well as heresies. But this church doesn't have any of these aspects. This church is having a problem of indifference. And, I, and the main problem that this church has is that they are wealthy. The wealth of the city is making that this church has become prideful. And that's why God is telling to them, hey, you are not living poverty. You are living in an extreme poverty. Revelation chapter 3, verse 18. Therefore, I counsel you to buy from me gold, refined in the fire, so you can become rich. Now, we need to understand that we, in the historical facts, when we look at the presentation, we found out that they were selling gold to all, the, all, the, all those cities which were around around Laodicea, but now God is telling us, I counsel you. Other translations say, I advise you. So God is saying, you don't have what I can give it to you. And now he said, I counsel to buy from me gold. So what is the gold that God is talking about in this message? So you can become rich and white clothes to wear. They were those who were making clothes. And now God is telling them that they need to buy God's clothes so you can cover your shameful nakedness and eyes self to put on your eyes so you can see. And now another aspect is that we have already seen by the historical facts that they were having that powder that they need for their eyes. But Jesus is telling them, you don't have that aspect. I am giving you all those things that you need in order to have your good side. And let's see. According, let's, let, let's turn our Bible to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. And let's see what is the, the gold refined that God is talking about. 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 1, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7, and the Bible says, These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perish even though refined by fire, might be proved genuine and might result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. So, According to the Bible, gold refined is the faith that those people needed at that time so they could get those benefits that Jesus was offering to them. But they were rejecting any kind of help because they were thinking, remember that we, that we saw already that they have an indifference. They are not having problem of persecution. They are not having problem of heresy. But they do have problem of indifference. And, in no, and the Bible says, the faith comes to hear. And to hear what? The word of God. But they were not hearing the word of God, actually. They were rejecting all the helps that somebody could give it, could, could give it to them. And now, the Bible says, white clothes to wear you. God want to wear them but they were rejecting everything and these white clothes frequently are used as a symbol of justice and what what else salvation when god is using in the book of revelation and in different places throughout the bible we are going to find that white clothes are meant for justice and salvation and I would like to, to, to aim something important in the presentation because God is calling them that they need to 
cover their nakedness. But according to the ancient Near East, then